Okay, y'all. If you don't know, now you know. Mercury retrograde is real. Is rizzle up in the hizzle right now, and it's not even fully direct. We're just in the pre-shadow. Okay. I'm hoping this is going to work. I took my Wi-Fi off. I'm just on my cellular data. Hopefully now you can see me and it's going to work. Give me a shout out. Let me know it's working. Mercury in retrograde killing me right now in the world. Okay. I see people joining. So hopefully that means that you can actually see me and it's not going in and out. We're going to start this party over. Woohoo. All right. Mercury retrograde. Come on. Work with me. Universe. Work with me. Mercury. Hi. Hi, Vern. Hi, Kim. Okay. All right, y'all. Struggle is real. Mercury retrograde hates me. Um, all right. Let's do this damn thing. So I'm super excited to be here tonight and talking to you guys about um, subject matter that is near and dear to my heart. Um, I am actually launching a course right now, both an online and in-person version called um, Mystic Mindset Ritual and Spell for the Modern Witch. And this is the first class. Um, I'm doing four live classes during this course on Facebook. But this is the first half of the first class of this series. And I was getting really excited when I was writing this content and I decided that I wanted to actually offer it um, through my business page so that more people could be exposed to it. Um, and so here I am sharing it with all you amazing people. So say hi to me as you join and you hop on, even if you're watching the replay so I know where you're watching from. Um, okay, so witch, the word witch. Um, and the repression of the divine feminine. So that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. Um, I wanted to just do a little super, super quick history of um, what we refer to now as witchcraft, but what originated as magic. And that dates back to ancient Roman Greece. Um, so magical practices, rites, ceremony um, are all referred to in many ancient texts. And then magic kind of as we know it right now, what we refer to as witchcraft, um, began to really take form in ancient Rome. And we first read about it in ancient Rome um, by, the, by the poet Virgil around about 59 BC. So, um, and the thing that I think is just fascinating is that in ancient history, more men, it, as many if not more, and, and there are many um, sources that cite that there were more men actually practicing magic than women. So this kind of just leads me, that's a little bit of history just about kind of how this all originated and started, but what I really want to talk about tonight is who were the witches, um, and who are the witches, quite frankly. Um, so they were the medicine women, they were the healers, they were the midwives, Hi, Carrie. Um, and as we all know, between 1482 and 1782, um, 40 to 40 to 50,000 men, women, and children were executed for witchcraft. Um, and the belief at that time that women were the weaker sex, um, that we were morally and spiritually weaker, uh, is really what led to the accusers being able to vilify women as witches. Um, and leading to us, you know, being burned at the stake and, and for the most part hung, not, not burned as history and all the movies would have you believe. But, um, but it really was this fear of, of female weakness, um, and, and that women were more susceptible to demonic possession that, that led to those accusers really being able to vilify women, um, and begin the demise of the divine feminine as we knew it at that time. Um, so I wanted to just kind of talk a little bit about like, what does that mean? Um, what does it mean to be a witch? Um, does it mean that you sleep with Satan? Does it mean that you're always hexing people and doing animal sacrifice? Um, I know witches that hex people and I know witches that do animal sacrifice. I don't know any that claim they sleep with Satan. So I'm not really sure about that part. <laughs> um, but you know, to me, for the sake of this conversation, what I really want to talk about is um, this vilification and this repression of the divine feminine. 
Um, if you have not read this book, Witch by Lisa Lister, go run out and get it. It's amazing. Um, it's some of the best work that I've read recently on this topic. Um, and in fact, I made it a prerequisite for my course <laughs> because I love it so much. Um, I'm on my third pass through of it now and the audiobook just came out. So I'm actually getting that too. But I want to read something in here from her that just resonated so much with me. Um, and she says, the witch, in each and every woman, there is a creature. She's, she is wild and she's a reflection of nature. She's a powerful force. She's a power source. She's passionate, creative, deeply intuitive, and has a knowing that's older than time itself. And what's that creature's name? Witch. The witch is often painted as ugly, scary, a woman who does bad things, but that is not the truth. She's often seen as a spellcaster, a weaver of dark arts, and someone who creates hexes and curses. And hmm, this is sometimes true. Rarely, however, is the witch seen as a wise woman, a power source, and a force of nature. Yet this is actually the truth. Um, so that's where I'm going with this, with this live. And um, I want to talk about the vilification of women and the word witch and that the witch hunts were simply patriarchal propaganda. Um, it was femicide and it was the slaughtering of women and the ultimate repression of the divine feminine. So 80% of those 40 to 50,000 people that were killed during the witch trials were women. Um, and here's the real deal about that. Most were healers. They were the women who were healing and caring for their communities. Um, they were pagan women who honored both male and female gods, but above all honored mother earth and revered in her beauty and in her sacredness. And they were the herbalists and the plant medicine healers and the doctors of their time and of their generation. Um, and that because of their power and because of their understanding and ability to do the things that they can do, could do led to people being scared, being intimidated, um, being insecure and wanting to really vilify and squash that out. Um, so Salem in 1962, women again, vilified, slaughtered because they were feared. And you know, at that time the propaganda was that they were evil temptresses that whose mere presence could endanger the souls of righteous men, right? So um, the, patriarchy, the patriarchy needed to destroy the divine feminine to create order and compliance with religious beliefs and practices. And um, I'm not here to talk negatively about anybody's religious beliefs or practices. Um, I believe that all can coexist together. Um, but for the sake of this conversation, I need it to really be understood and you guys to understand that there was a need to control pagan society, in particular women and the power of women. And as a result, this is the propaganda that was pushed on communities. Um, and now here we are and we exist in a primarily male dominated world, right? Um, masculine reigns supreme. And the feminine magic of emotions and unpredictability is seen as weak um, or has been widely seen as weak up until this point. Um, what I love and what I'm, what I'm passionate about is that this is changing, right? Time is, times are changing. Um, we are waking up. So we're waking up to the path of the goddess again. We are reclaiming our power. We are stepping into our authority as women. Um, we are abandoning that notion that our emotions make us weak, that our unpredictability and our wildness make us the weaker sex or, or make us less than. Um, so we're in, in really, in a sense, we're reclaiming our power. Um, we're recalling our gifts, our intuition, our knowing. Um, we are owning the great power that we yield um, as being creators. Um, we have this amazing gift and ability to create life, to make milk to feed our babies, um, 
we're fucking magic. Like basically we're fucking magic. <laughs> and, and to me, getting away from vilification of those powers and those gifts and really beginning to embrace them as a community, um, is going to lead to much, a better overall society. Um, because living in fear and, and being in a fear-based society, we're seeing right now what that's doing to us. Um, take or leave our current administration, we have a world of people who are scared and, and are worried and are upset. So, you know, we are once again walking the true path of the goddess. And we're beginning to reject that debilitating, demonizing patriarchal structure. And I am not here to vilify the patriarchy or the masculine by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I am a hundred percent believer that the divine feminine and the sacred masculine need to coexist together. Um, but, but what we're beginning to do as women is we're beginning to cast aside the shame that really is ingrained from us in us from such an early age. You know, we are taught to cover our bodies. We are taught not to be sexy. We are taught not to show too much skin um, for fear of tempting a man. We are taught to feel shame about our monthly menstruation. Um, we are not taught to harness the power of our lunar cycles and and the energies of the moon, um, which to me is, is the biggest disservice that we can do um, to a young woman. And I guess, you know, for me, I just grew up thinking and still think like if there can be a male God, then why can't there be a female one? Like it just, it doesn't really make sense to me. So who said that the patriarchy rules? Who made that rule? Who in this day, day and age when we can choose and when we can stand up and we have freedom of religion and we have freedom of speech, um, in theory, <laughs> I, why can't we choose? Why can't we choose the goddess? Why can't we choose both the god and the goddess? Um, so the important thing to know here is that when women realize their power, they are unstoppable and impossible to control. And as you can imagine, that is very scary for the powers that are trying to control us or trying to control that um, for those that are, like I mentioned, scared and insecure and afraid. Um, Women are still being murdered all over this planet for being witches. Um, there, the patriarchy is still attempting to control women um, through execution regarding witchcraft. Um, and so it, that's just a reality that we all need to seek. And, and they're killing um, women grown women, but they're also killing children. They're killing young girls and, and young boys and young men. Um, but it's, it's all about this fear base, right? Like it's this huge fear base. Um, so as witches, we were mothers and we were healers and we were wise women and we were herbalists. And so I say now, and I challenge now that as witches now, we are still mothers and we are healers and we are doctors and we are wise women and we are spiritual guides and we are botanists um, and we are your neighbor, we are your teacher. Um, and the word witch to me doesn't need to be this very scary thing. Um, it's us, it's about us stepping in and embracing our power. Um, as women and as witches, we trust ourselves. We trust our intuition. We trust our knowing and we do so unapologetically. Uh, I love this quote from um, Tamara Albana and she says, the divine feminine is the mother, lover, sister and creator. She is the seasons. She is the moon. She is birth, she is death. With her, without her, we would all cease to exist and yet we have forgotten her. And that's just, it's so poignant and so relevant to me because we are creators. As women, we are creators. We are oracles. We are emotion. Our just, our very being and who we are is emotion. We are the cycles of the moon and we are the tides. 
we are that power and each one of us is a force of nature and we are waking we are waking to that feminine power we are waking to that divine feminine power that resides within each of us and we are starting to step back into our rightful place beside men beside the patriarchy um, and I won't even say the patriarchy because hopefully the patriarchy just goes away but beside the masculine um, and hopefully as we awaken they also awaken and we stand beside the sacred masculine um, one of the things that's so amazing to me is to witness this waking of the divine feminine and to see how women are fully stepping into their power um, and and one of the ways one of the beautiful beautiful ways that I see women doing this is through feminine movement practice and super honored to have Bernadette Pleasant here on this live stream with me who is my mentor and my teacher and my spirit animal <laughs> um, but she is the founder of FEM um, therapeutic movement which is has, is just changing has changed my life is changing my life um, but she is one of the pioneers in in this feminine movement practice um, and I just to see women waking up to their bodies and not being ashamed and and really being able to stand in their power and in their beauty and in their sensuality and their eroticism and truly own who they are without feeling shame to me is the most beautiful thing um, and Sheila Kelly of S Factor is another um, another woman that's changed my life and has just influenced me so greatly and I'm I'm proud to be a participating member of both of those feminine movement practices um, and you know the work of people like Lisa Lister who wrote this book which that's really waking people up to what's happening in our community um, and in our world and on our planet right now with the feminine um, reawakening and people like Mama Gina who um, you know helps so much with her amazing work with women and um, reclaiming our pussy power and you know I'm just I'm all about it I my one of my passions right now is getting women back in tune with their lunar cycles really harnessing the power of the moon because our ancestors are now just shaking their heads and rolling over in their graves and just cannot believe that we have uh, we have completely put this aside the power that we harness when we simply realize what's happening with our bodies in tune with the moon cycles we can create anything we want I mean it's just magic and I see it happening in my life every day and I see it happening in the lives of my clients and so for me right now educating about that um, is huge because when you're in the cycle of the month where you should be creating you should be creating and when you're in the cycle of the month where you should be resting you should be resting and you shouldn't be fighting against that and going against that I mean feminine flow and being in your feminine flow is is the most powerful powerful magic that I know of um, and if that's witchcraft and you want to hang me up from a tree for that then I guess that's what's gonna have to happen because <laughs> I am you know I'm, I'm not gonna stop I'm not gonna stop educating women about how to harness their power I'm not gonna stop educating women about fully stepping into their authenticity and and being just the raw emotional magical creatures that they are you know I tell my clients all the time I'm like feel all the feels feel all the feels if you're pissed be pissed if you're sad be sad if you want to cry cry if you want to rage rage and don't make excuses about that just be in it the masculine's intention and intent is to be that stable force in our lives and in our world and they can't fully stand in their masculine power if we're not willing to fully stand in our glory in our beauty and our emotional in our emotional power um, yeah so you know I think um, for me I know that our ancestors are calling to us it is time it is time for us to reclaim this power um, they are asking us to take our rightful place beside our brothers beside the masculine and again like I want to reiterate here like this is not about man-hating or um, 
you know, not wanting to be a part of that because truly the two coexist in unison so beautifully. It's just when one tries to take over the other that, that we find ourselves in the situation that we're in right now and people are killed and executed and um, burned and hung and horrible things happen. So, um, you know, we can use the word witch or we can use the word goddess or we can use divine feminine or, I mean, there's so many different terms that we can use, but the most important thing is, is that whatever term you choose, now is the time to rise. Now is the time for us to take our younger sisters and our daughters by the hand and teach them not to be in shame about their body, not to be not to hide who they are, not to stifle their emotions, not to hide that that wonderful, beautiful wildness that exists in each of us. Um, the time now is to really embrace that um, and to nurture that and to grow that in them and and to really have them step into a world where we honor that in them um, and we don't shame them for it. And it is our responsibility. It is our responsibility as women to do that. It is our responsibility to start and begin and continue to say no um, to to the patriarchy, to being shamed, to you know being told to cover up or that we're too sexy or that that's not appropriate or it, all of those things. It's time to just be done with that um, and. You know, and I think it is time to reclaim the word witch. And, you know, I'm so excited about this course because what about ritual? What about everyday magic? What about spell and sacred space and altars and, and all of that? Yeah, 100%. It's all a part of it. Um, finding your own true individual spiritual path that hasn't been dictated to you by an organization that is looking to make money is really important. We are individual spirituality is as unique as a thumbprint. There is no two women. There are no two women out there that are alike. No two women have the exact same spiritual path or the same spiritual awakening. And for me, Creating a non-judgmental sacred space for women to explore that is my purpose on this planet and it is my passion. And so, yeah, so that's what this course is going to be about. It's going to be about the real. It's going to be about the history. It's going to be about the divine feminine. It's going to be about how to reclaim that. And it is going to be witchy and it's going to be about how to create sacred space in your home. It's going to be how to create an altar, how to do simple spell and ritual and infuse your life with everyday magic because to me I am fucking tired of mediocre I don't know about you but mediocre sucks like I don't want to live one more second of any day of my life having it be mediocre I choose joy I choose bliss I choose eroticism I choose powerful feminine energy I choose badass feminine women to surround myself with and I choose magic and, and I want my life to be magical and I want to see the synchronicities and I want to trust my intuition and I want to trust my knowing and I want to, can one join your class virtually? Yes, I have an online version. There's gonna be an online version and there's going to be an in-person version. So I will talk about that in just a second. Um, but, um, you know, sacred practices like divination and ritual and spell work and this stuff isn't evil, folks. It's just powerful and wonderful and magical and, and fills your life with joy and bliss. And I cannot wait to share it with you. Um, I have this amazing group of women here in Salt Lake City that I've been sharing this stuff with um, for about the last year and a half. And I'm just so blessed to be able to bring this to a broader community. Um, so yeah, to Bernadette's question, let's see, did I talk about everything? Let's see. Yeah, so some of the things that we're going to cover in this course, divination, creating sacred space, plants, use of herbs, um, oils, stones, history, ritual, um, all this amazing goodness, ceremony, um, spells and tools. And 
and the why. So the more importantly, the why, why we're doing this, why, what purpose does it fill? It's not doing it. Yep. Moon cycles for sure. Christy, we talked about that a little bit earlier. We're definitely going to be really, really delving into tracking our lunar cycles and learning our lunar cycles. Because again, every woman's lunar cycles are different. No two of us have the same one. And so when you can really harness that energy, so we are going to be tracking lunar cycles and learning about that. Um, so, and we're also doing that in my 60 day challenge that is starting on August 14th. So, um, you can look out for information on that as well. And I will be doing a standalone uh, lunar moon magic class in the end of September. But for the sake of this live stream and these courses that we're talking about right now, um, there are two of them. So um, my live class in Salt Lake City is actually full, but I decided today to open three more spots in that class. So there is an in-person class. It is more, um, it's an all day style. style. Um, so there's three, there's a day in August, a day in September and a day in October. And it's an all day course. It's a six hour um, intensive. Um, and the in-person attendees also will have access to the online course, the online class, all of the live classes that will be happening online. Um, and then there is an online version. And so the online version is going to be really amazing and magical as well. You're going to have information from those all day events um, available to you, as well as the live streams and the classes and all the content and all the coursework um, online as well. So um, this was only the first half of this class and I will actually be doing the second half of this class in the online group. It has a, its own Facebook group and I'll be doing the second half of this online class in that group on Saturday. So if you liked what you heard and you want to hear more and you want to learn more about this magical witchy world of mine, um, I would love to have you join me. I'm going to post some links to the courses here um, in the video. And yeah, does anyone have questions? Like I would love to just kind of like chat for a minute. I'm not sure what time it is. Yeah, okay. Ended on time with all my technical difficulties. But if anyone has questions, I'm happy to answer anything. Um, but yeah, as you can tell, I'm super passionate about this. Um, I want, I don't have any daughters. Um, I wanted one so badly, but I don't have any. And I ended up with these three amazing boys. And so I'm also teaching them about the divine feminine and what it means to be in the sacred masculine. And they have this absolutely amazing father who does such a good job of it and shows up for them every day in that way. So they have a really great role model, but I want to help you teach your daughters about it because I think it's so amazing. And while you guys are, if anyone has questions, please post them. But I also forgot that I did want to share this one last, um, section out of this book. And again, you don't have this book, go get it, which Lisa Lister, so good, so good, so good. Um, one other passage that I really loved. So a witch is an unapologetic woman. She alchemizes experiences and emotions. Seriously, I need it. I want a tattoo of that. I literally want a tattoo that says I'm an alchemist of experiences and emotions because that shit is raw and real and rad. Sorry, I digress. Uh, she's a woman with power, agency, and sovereignty. Like sovereignty, right? Isn't that what it's all about? That is what it's about. Sovereignty. And she has it on her terms. She creates and manifests. She is self-sourced. She freely communes with nature, spirit, God, goddess. Choose your own semantics without needing a go-between. Being a witch is being a woman in her power. It's being someone who trusts her inner authority and doesn't look outside herself for validation and or approval. It's being someone who uses her own personal magic to navigate and negotiate the environment she currently finds herself in. So I don't know about you, but there's not one thing in that description that I wouldn't wish for any woman that I know on this planet. So that's what I'm here for. That's what I'm here to bring you. No, Christy, you keep your daughters. They're awesome. One of them's on here actually. So she's probably going to be mad at you. <laughs> um, but I love you guys. Thank you for letting me share. Um, Thank you for letting me share something that I'm so passionate about. I am so fucking honored that Bernadette was on here. Um, I'm a femme attuned teacher for 
I just said fam. I'm a Famatune teacher and I'm so looking forward to bringing more classes to Salt Lake City and hoping that Bernadette's going to join me out here in September for a retreat. Um, and yeah, I just... Burn the course is over a three month period. It's all um, content that you can access at any time on your own. Um, so the lives, obviously, if you can be there for the lives, great. Um, but you'll be able to access all the content um, on your own. The online course is, oh, Chris, help me out. Uh, I believe it's $333 one payment or there's a payment plan for four hundred and forty four dollars and there's a couple of payment plan options I will post the links below once I hop off or Chris if you can post the links to the two um, Facebook events um, then people can kind of see so that's the the online um, but there's a three hundred and thirty three is that right Chris okay yeah so three hundred and thirty three one-time payment four hundred and forty four payment plan um, but it's about, I would say it's going to end up being, um, probably 10 hours of online content. Um, and then people that work with me know, like I'm constantly adding live streams, so it may end up being more than that because I like to get on here and talk to you guys a lot. So, um, but there will be, um, PowerPoint presentations and slides and um, live videos and pre recorded videos and content and information from the and video and audio from the actual in person class um, in the online version. So I'm really excited about that. Um, Chris, look, you should be super happy. Look at the red witch right here. Look at that sunset hitting my red hair. Yeah, dyed my hair red because I give no. F's anymore. I want to just be free to be myself in the world. <laughs> um, so I love you guys. Please, if you have any more questions, <laughs> Christy's been calling me the red witch since I dyed my hair, but it normally doesn't look this fiery. If it looked like that all the time, I'd be happy. That's kind of rad actually. Um, yeah. So I think that's it. Um, would love to have you join me. I, um, We'll most likely be doing a special promo this evening on the course for the members of my Magical Life group. So Chris dropped the link to the Magical Life in the li in the comments of this. So if you join the group, um, you'll be able to get that discount on the course. Um, I'm in there every day sharing all kinds of radness, magic, tarot, witchy, yummy goodness uh, in that group. So I hope everyone has an amazing evening. I'm going to go feed my, my two divine or my two sacred masculine rugrats that are running around upstairs and we'll talk soon. Mwah.